Thank organizers for invitation. I, actually, I have a problem with this title. First, I'm not sure I can pronounce it. And second, uh, I'm not pretty sure I, uh, I understand the meaning of this word. I think I learned it from uh, some of, of French colleagues. And I think uh, they use it in a, not exactly in the, in the meaning uh, that exists in English. So if native speakers uh, could comment uh, after this talk and explain what it really means, I would appreciate it. Okay. So how, uh, so how, how I think people in France understand it? Uh, first, uh, uh, centauric tiling, it's something like that. Uh, but uh, for, for what is more important for us, uh, it's a kind of metaphorical idea uh, with the, with the following meaning. Assume we have uh, some tiling or just some, some object which combines properties that seems uh, mutually uh, exclusive. Some tilings which is uh, at once complex and simple. And uh, like uh, uh, a centaur, which is a half man, half horse, if you uh, see it for the first time, you think it's Impossible, it cannot exist. But if you look more closely, well, half horse, a half man, why not? Uh, there is no... <laughs> and uh, this is exactly the, the idea of these strange tilings, because at first, uh, at first sight it, uh, it could uh, look strange and even impossible, but when we look uh, more closely, we'll see that uh, there is nothing surprising combining different properties together. Okay, uh, this talk somehow uh, continues uh, the morning session of this Monday uh, when we had uh, three talks about talents. So uh, just le let me remind briefly uh, what it is all about. Uh, we are going to investigate uh, talents or subjects of finite type because it's uh, it's uh, some way to talk about simple rules uh, that uh, somehow enforce uh, non-trivial global properties. Uh, what are the local rules? In a uh, subject of finite type, we just uh, say that some finite set of finite patterns is forbidden. In uh, Talix, uh, the local rules or the local constraints are just the constraints for neighboring Talix, so the neighboring squares. Uh, should have the same colors on the, on the adjacent sides. Uh, why people are interested in that? Uh, there are lots of different motivations. What is important for us in uh, this talk, there are uh, motivations that came from uh, the theory of dynamical system and from computability. And uh, this property of kintoricity, it's an attempt to combine properties that are interesting for people for these two communities. For uh, symbolic dynamics and from, com from computability. A uh, very short uh, remind, uh, reminder of what, uh, what is a tiling, that is what is a formal definition. Uh, we fix some uh, finite set of colors and we say that a tile is just a, a unit square with colored sides. A tile set is just a finite set of tiles. And uh, a tiling of, a, of the plane, it's, uh, it's a pavement of uh, Z2, so that uh, for every two neighboring squares, uh, the adjacent sides should have the same colors. That's, that's the idea. So this is an example of a finite pattern where for every two neighboring squares, uh, this local constraint uh, satisfies. Well, uh, what, what kind of global properties we want to enforce by these local rules? Uh, if we look from the point of view of computability theory, then a natural question is how to enforce 
some uh, complex uh, global picture, some properties of uh, algorithmic complexity of the global picture. And in fact, uh, quite impressive results are known. Uh, I will start with historical first result of this type. It's known that there exists such a tile set that you can tile the plane, but all tilings are non-periodic. So there is no non-trivial uh, shift, no non-trivial uh, period. Uh, it looks uh, uh, pretty naive as, a, uh, as an example of algorithmic complexity, but in fact uh, it's, uh, it's something more complex than uh, just a periodic picture. Um, a more impressive example, uh, uh, there exists a tile set such that all tilings are not just aperiodic, but they are all non-computable. So you can tile, there exist uh, tilings of the plane and each of them is non-computable. In fact, we can uh, 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 do even more. We can uh, construct such a tile set where uh, all tilings have maximal Kolmogorov complexity in a sense. That is, for every finite pattern of size n times n in a tiling, Kolmogorov complexity of this tiling is uh, quite high. Uh, technically, it should be linear, at least linear in n. Uh, another another uh, type of uh, these results uh, is this theorem, which cla claims that somehow uh, in two-dimensional tilings we can uh, implement, we can simulate any uh, subshift or any effectively closed subshift from, from dimension one. Just let me see uh, more precisely what it means. Ah, yes. uh, if you have uh, some effectively closed uh, subshift uh, in dimension one, I can construct such a tile, uh, tile set tau that uh, for every tau tiling, if you look at vertical columns, then each of them somehow corresponds to a letter uh, from A. That is, uh, there is a projection which maps each tiling to, to some letter uh, from the alphabet for A, and uh, the infinite, the by infinite sequence that you will read on these lines uh, must be a sequence, uh, a, a point from this effectively closed subshift. So, and every effectively closed, every point from A can be received by such a uh, tool configuration. So somehow it uh, turns out that uh, with uh, very simple local rules, we can implement a rather complex uh, structure in the sense of computability theory. Uh, now let us look at, at tilings from some other point. Uh, where, uh, now we are think of tilings as a, some, uh, a toy example of a dynamical system. It's a dynamical system with two natural transformations. It's a horizontal shift and a vertical shift. And then uh, if you want to have a simple, in a sense, dynamical uh, system, then probably uh, one of the most natural requir requirements is to ask, is to require that this dynamical system is uh, minimal. There is no non-trivial subsystem in it. Or in, uh, in terms of tilings, it means that all tilings have exactly the same uh, set of finite patterns. Or another way to, to say this uh, idea, to express this idea, all, uh, all tilings somehow look uh, identical locally. So if you are given some finite uh, part of a tiling, uh, it's, uh, you, you have no information about uh, this specific point. So all points from a tilings, from, for these tilings, uh, look locally exactly this, in the, same, the same. A slightly weaker version of this property 
we could require that every tiling is quasi-periodic. That is, uh, every finite pattern that appears in some tiling should appear there infinitely often, in infinitely many positions. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, dynamical system, it means that uh, every point is uniformly recurrent. So if you have some point, uh, th then you apply shifts and you can return arbitrary close to the initial point. So uh, now we are going to ask these kind of questions. How can we combine uh, these two points of view together? That is, can we enforce at the same time high algorithmic complexity in some sense? Uh, say, a periodicity or better non-computability or high chromograph complexity of patterns or whatever. And at the same time, uh, remain uh, pretty simple in the sense of uh, combinatorics in the same of dynamical systems. That is, uh, guarantee that all tilings are quasi-periodic or even uh, the subshift of all tilings <coughs> is uh, minimal or something like that. Uh, why, uh, why it uh, seems not pretty trivial? Uh, there are some, uh, some uh, constraints. So you cannot, in some, uh, in, in some cases, uh, you cannot combine simplicity in the sense of uh, dynamical systems and complexity in the sense of computability. For example, for every minimal subject of finite type, uh, there exists at least one computable configuration. So you cannot uh, require both minimality and non-computability. Yes? So if, uh, 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 let, let us take a tiling or uh, an SFT, uh, which is minimal. That is, all uh, configurations have exactly the same finite pattern. Then I claim that there exists at, at least one infinite computable configuration. In fact, it's a simple. OK, let us try to prove it. Just uh, uh, let me go to the next line, then it will be easier. Ah, yes. Uh, I, so, sorry, just uh, instead of, uh, before answering your question, I should uh, go to the second line. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, yes, I said the second line, but I showed you the first line. So we have uh, two properties. For minimal uh, SFT, we have two properties. First, uh, the set of finite patterns is computable, and second, there exists uh, at least one computable point. So the second, uh, yes, the second line follows, uh, of course, from the first one, right? Not exactly. Uh, why, uh, why they are? Why, why it, uh, okay, assume we believe that the set of finite patterns is computable. Uh, then uh, let us take some pattern of size one times one, uh, which uh, can appear in an infinite configuration. We can find it algorithmically. Then we can extend it, then extend it again, 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 and so we get an infinite uh, correct pattern. Uh, now let us uh, prove the first line. Why uh, this set of finite patterns is computable. Uh, let us draw the, the infinite tree of finite configurations in the sense of extension, like in this picture. So we start with an with a empty configuration, and then we add as descenders all uh, patterns of size one, then to each of them, we add every extension of size 
3 times 3, etc., etc., etc. So some infinite uh, branches in this tree correspond to infinite con configurations. They have no forbidden patterns. So assume I want to, I, I have some specific finite pattern, and I want to know whether there exists an infinite branch uh, containing exactly this pattern. Uh, I will uh, investigate uh, this tree just layer by layer, uh, cutting the branches where I find uh, something forbidden. I claim that at some level, each non-forbidden uh, non branch, non, not cut branch, will, uh, either all non-cut branch will contain this pattern or none of them will contain this pattern. Indeed, uh, since the, the tiling is minimal, then either all infinite branches have this pattern or all infinite branches do not have it. So, at some, at some finite level, I will determine which, is, which case uh, is true for my specific tile set. And that's it. I think I, I've seen this argument in some paper of uh, Mike uh, Hochman, but it's pretty simple, so probably it would be insulting to attribute this result to him. Okay. Uh, yeah, another, another sort of negative result. Uh, if uh, you, if uh, your tile set is not minimal, but all uh, configurations are quasi-periodic, then uh, I cannot claim that uh, the set of patterns is computable. I cannot claim that there is a computable infinite con configuration, but I can claim that the function of quasi-periodicity is computable. That is, the density, I, I, for each pattern, I can compute its density. I don't know in advance whether it appears in uh, any infinite configuration or not, but if it appears, I can say what is the allowed minimal density for these patterns. Uh, a little bit different uh, kind of negative result. Uh, it is known that uh, Turing spectrum, the set of Turing degrees uh, for quasi-periodic uh, tilings cannot be arbitrary. It, it must be at least uh, upward closed. It, uh, what, what, uh, th this fact was explained by Pascal uh, this uh, Monday morning. And uh, the last but not the least, uh, just why it's difficult to combine uh, combinatorial simplicity and algorithmic complexity. Because uh, if you take some, some usual, some standard constructions of complex, algorithmically complex stylings, then uh, they, they don't look uh, simple in uh, the sense of dynamical systems. Uh, okay. And nevertheless, we can, we can uh, construct some sort of this centauric objects. We can uh, combine some, at, at least some version of uh, algorithmic complexity and uh, combinatorial simplicity. Uh, here is a, an example of, of a result of this type. There exists a tile set such that all tilings are at once aperiodic, so it's a very weak, very first, the very first form or of algorithmic non-triviality, and at the same time, it's quasi-periodic. Uh, in fact, we can prove even slightly more. Uh, we can construct a tile set such that all tilings are aperiodic, and uh, the corresponding uh, uh, SFT, the, the shift of all toe tilings, is minimal. Uh, again, it's, it's some problem with attribution of this theorem. It is not trivial. But if you ask uh, people in the, in the area, in this field, uh, usually people say, oh, of course, it's, it must be possible. Uh, we should take some known, ex uh, known construction of aperiodic tilings and then somehow adjust it. Uh, but uh, uh, I think usually people do not try to do it accurately. The only uh, 
lays the only paper where Sinet written uh, with the proof in full details was a PhD thesis of uh, Alexis Balaguer. Uh, he took uh, the uh, tile set uh, suggested by Nicolas Olanger. It was a, a version of Robinson tile set and uh, uh, accurately proved that for these tile sets, the set of uh, tilings is a uh, uh, is a minimum. Okay, uh, so uh, once again, here we have a periodicity and on the other hand, quasi periodicity and even minimality. Can we make this blue, uh, blue part of the statement uh, stronger? Can we uh, have a more, uh, more impressive, more uh, stronger version of algorithmic complexity? In fact, yes, we can combine quasi-periodicity and non-computability. But uh, just once again, uh, in this result, we can combine a periodicity and minimality. And here we have non-computability and only quasi-periodicity. We cannot ask uh, at once non-computability and minimality just because of the, of the argument on the, on the blackboard. Because uh, if we have some minimal uh, tile set, then uh, there must be a computable point. Okay. Uh, can we go uh, further? Just before uh, I will discuss more technical statements, I think uh, this, is a, this is the message of this talk for people not in this specific area. What we can achieve? We can achieve non-computability and quasi-periodicity. Okay, let's try to go further. Let us try to uh, do something uh, more interesting than just non-computability. Uh, it turns out that we can guarantee uh, that uh, we can construct such a tile set uh, uh, where in all tilings, in all finite patterns, Komogor complexity is high. Technically, uh, for a square n times n, its Komogor complexity should be at least linear in N. And we combine this property with a quasi-periodicity. So if you want to have only this blue property, then it is known from, uh, from the paper of uh, Duran, Levin, and Shen. It's not trivial, it's not that simple, but uh, their construction is certainly not quasi-periodic. And now we can uh, somehow may make it also uh, quasi-periodic. Uh, if we come back to the talk of uh, Pascal, then a natural question is, is I think, uh, what can we say about uh, Turing degrees of quasi-periodic tilings? Just before uh, I will formulate a theorem, uh, let me remind that uh, for every, just for every uh, tiling, uh, for every, just absolutely every, uh, a tiling toe, uh, the set of all toe tilings is effectively closed. And you can compute some toe tiling with an oracle uh, zero prime. So you cannot uh, hope to guarantee that all Turing degrees are, say, uh, much bigger than zero prime. Another constraint uh, comes from the talk of Pascal, uh, which explains that if we have quasi-periodic tilings, then the set of uh, Turing degrees must be upward closed. So uh, we cannot hope to, uh, to uh, uh, eliminate this constraint. But uh, essentially, it turns out that essentially these two constraints, that's uh, all uh, what we have. Uh, next theorem claims that uh, somehow, or somehow it's a characterization of uh, Turing spe spectrum so that uh, can be achieved with quasi-periodic tilings. If you give me some uh, uh, effectively closed uh, set, uh, then I can construct a tile set such that on one hand uh, all tilings are quasi-periodic and on the other hand uh, the Turing spectrum is exactly this uh, uh, set A plus all points, all degrees above A. And uh, uh, probably the last technical statement that I want to explain is uh, uh, 
that for uh, uh, this, this uh, theorem, which claims that in some sense uh, we, uh, we can simulate minimal uh, effectively closed subshifts by minimal uh, by quasi periodic uh, and minimal even minimal tallings. Uh, in a sense, it's a version of the uh, theorem of Obran and Sablik, and uh, our, which also was proved in our paper with uh, uh, Duran and Shen, which cl uh, claims that it's uh, the, this picture. In this sense, we can simulate any effectively closed uh, subshift by two-dimensional tiling. Here we claim uh, that a similar statement holds for minimal subshifts. Minimal one-dimensional subshifts can be simulated by minimal tilings. Okay, uh, I think it's that uh, that is what I wanted to say about technical parts, the statements of this story, and uh, just l let me come back to a simple and uh, natural statement. I think I will spend uh, the last of this talk trying to explain why this theorem is true and uh, what are the technique which, uh, which is uh, enough, which allows to prove this theorem and can be generalized, generalized to prove other theorems uh, from the previous slide. But probably it's, it's a natural question, a natural point for questions about statements before we talk about proofs. Just once again. So is there some, some uh, important uh, open question here in, in this, uh, what, can we, or this technique or? or uh, for, for, uh, I, I think for, for an important open question we need uh, uh, Emmanuel Jandel. Uh, the last uh, question he formulated explicitly was uh, the, the statement of this theorem 4. Uh, it looks uh, uh, quite peculiar, peculiar, but since Emmanuel uh, claims it's uh, important, uh, we uh, uh, spend some time and prove it for him. Uh, uh, to go further, we, we need his, uh, his, uh, his guidance. Uh, so you, you work in a service model. <laughs> <laughs> but there is nothing but you, what, what would be a natural goal to achieve here. Or, uh, Just what, what I, 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 I was trying to, to explain is that, uh, uh, in, in my point of view, we somehow achieved uh, the natural borderlines. We mm -hmm. can go further, uh, at least in, in, all, in a natural direction. If, uh, some, if an expert can, can explain in which uh, direction we, it can be, or it should be extended uh, further, it would be interesting. Okay, uh, what I like in this theorem, uh, in fact, we can discuss, uh, now you can forget uh, the first part of my talk. Uh, uh, you can even forget anything about computability, because in this statement, you see, uh, there is, there are two combinatorial properties, a periodicity and quasi-periodicity. Uh, yes, I advertised uh, a periodicity as a kind of algorithmic complexity, but of course it was a sort of cheating. It's a combinatorial property. So we have a purely combinatorial theorem. So you can explain it uh, to people in the street. I think if you ask some random guy somewhere in the neighborhood, they don't care about uh, delta three sets uh, that are too random. Uh, they are not interested. Uh, they care about some questions uh, down to earth, something like uh, uh, simple um, uh, connectivity of a sphere or zeros of a zero, uh, zeta functions. And you can explain this theorem to all these people in Lumini. Uh, we are in Lumini. There are lots of mathematicians around. And actually, I think uh, this is a, a, good, a, a good example to explain to uh, all these uh, mathematicians that uh, computability theory uh, makes sense. Uh, 
Uh, because in the statement you see there is uh, no computability, no Turing degrees, no Turing machines, nothing algorithmic. But we will use uh, some kind of algorithmic technique uh, in the proof. Uh, it's not a miracle, it's not that surprising. To prove this theorem, uh, we need some construction. Uh, you can uh, construct such a tricky tile set uh, using uh, many uh, different gadgets that are somehow complicated and you will need to verify very accurately that all uh, necessary properties uh, are satisfied. Or uh, you can uh, try to embed somehow in a tiling a Turing machine. And then you will say that, uh, okay, Turing machine is a universal model of uh, computation. If something can be done algorithmically, then it can be done by a Turing machine. So we will embed it in, in our tiling in some way, and we don't care about details. That's, uh, that's what, what, what happens in the proof. Okay, uh, yes. I think I, I will try to, to explain at least some, some plan of the proof. Uh, so we need to guarantee two properties of a tiling. So we'll construct a tile set such that all tilings are first aperiodic and second quasi-periodic. First, I will explain some uh, known uh, technique of constructing aperiodic tilings. And then we will adjust it, adjust this specific construction to uh, get quasi-periodicity. So how uh, to guarantee a periodicity? In fact, uh, we, will, uh, uh, we will enforce some, property, some other property. We will enforce uh, some kind of self-similarity of a tiling uh, using the, the, essentially the ideas that uh, goes back to Kliny that was used by von Neumann that are used in a highly non-trivial way by Peter Gatch in his uh, self-correcting uh, cellular automata. And uh, if you remember uh, Linda Stock from this Monday, then it, it will be easy for you. And then we will take this Linda's construction, we will slightly modify it, and by some miracle we will get, uh, we'll get uh, quasi-periodicity. Okay, mm. uh, maybe I, I can just uh, uh, jump uh, a few slides uh, Yes, I, I can skip a few slides if you remember uh, the talk of uh, Linda this Monday morning. So who, who believes that we, don't, uh, we remember the constructions of this fixed point tiling? <laughs> okay. No, you just you should believe uh, that you yourself believe in it. That's enough. Okay, uh, let me try to. I, I see that uh, uh, it will be. Uh, I, I will try try to replicate uh, the the same talk again, uh, may, maybe using some other wording. It's slight, slightly different pictures. Uh, first, uh, uh, just a, a technical idea. Uh, I want. To construct, uh, I want to construct a tile set that, in some sense, uh, simulates itself. What does it mean? Okay. Just uh, let us have some tile set tool. I will fix some set of patterns n times n. Tiled inside, these uh, squares are tiled uh, using the tiles from two. And I will use uh, these squares as a building blocks to construct a large tiling. So in some sense I will uh, look at these blocks as uh, super tiles or macro tiles. And in some sense uh, they should behave as uh, tiles uh, themselves. So it, technically, I should say that a macro tile, a tall macro tile, is just a square of size n times n. 
uh, were uh, tiled by tiles from Tor, and inside, for every two neighbors inside, the local constraint, the local cons constraints are satisfied. So uh, uh, every two uh, small tiles in the square should uh, have the same colors on adjacent sides. And I will say that I can use this uh, family of macro tiles to simulate uh, some other tile set row. If tiles from row are isomorphic to these macro tiles. So row is a set of tiles with some colors on their sides. And there should be one-to-one uh, -one correspondence between tiles of row and these macro tiles, so that uh, individual colors on row tiles uh, match each other if and only if the macro colors here on macro tiles match each other. That's the idea. And I say that a tile set is self-similar if it can simulate itself, so when, uh, where uh, I can construct a set of macro tiles that are uh, isomorphic to tiles to itself. So in the case where the row co coincides with to. I missed uh, one important uh, part of the definition. So in the definition of simulation, I require that every toe tiling can be uniquely uh, split into macro tiles. So if I have some row tiling, uh, some toe tiling, then I can uniquely find these cutting lines that split all the plane into squares of size n times n, where each square is one of these macro tiles. And uh, I can immediately get the following corollary. If I have some self-similar tile set, then every uh, tiling is uh, aperiodic. Uh, what is true? Assume we have some two tiling of the plane. Then we can uh, split it uniquely into macro tiles of size n times n. Since macro tiles uh, are isomorph isomorphic to tiles from two, so they behave, they behave in exactly the, the, the same way. So we can uh, split this grid of macro tiles into macro macro tiles. Then we uh, split the macro macro tiles into grid of macro 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 tiles, etc., 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 etc. And uh, if there exists some shift, non-trivial sh period, which shifts uh, this uh, tiling to itself, then uh, this shift uh, must respect all these cutting lines. Uh, every shift uh, must uh, move macro tiles to macro tiles, macro macro tiles to macro macro tiles. So uh, this, uh, the, uh, this shift, the com components of this shift uh, should uh, have factors n and square and cube, etc. So uh, the only way uh, when it's possible if the shift is trivial is zero. Uh, so what remains to do? It remains to construct some uh, tile set which is self-similar, which can simulate itself. And we are done, we get uh, an aperiodic tile set. Uh, just before I will explain how to, cons just one comment. Of, of course, you can invent some artificial example of a uh, small tile set that is uh, self-similar, uh, just uh, verify manually that uh, there is some set of macro tiles. But what we need is kind of uh, generic construction that can be uh, adopted for uh, our case uh, that can be made uh, quasi-periodic. So we will, uh, we will describe some general way of constructing uh, self-similar tilings that can involve some sense uh, arbitrary computation. That's the plan. Just before we realize this plan, I will explain how to construct a tile set 
uh, that can simulate your favorite tiles at row with, uh, with large enough zoom factor n. Uh, first of all, uh, so here is the moment where uh, uh, some computability appears. So, so far it was a purely combinatorial uh, argument and uh, even now it's a purely combinatorial question. But I will uh, reformulate it in, a more, in terms that are more uh, typical for uh, people from computability theory. First of all, I say that I will encode colors of tiles from a row by bits, by some by strings of k bits. Uh, then, uh, instead of saying that uh, tile set row is a finite set uh, of squares with colors on sides, I will say uh, pretty much the same thing, but in a strange way. I will say that there is a predicate with uh, four arguments, which is true on uh, tuples or that encodes legal colors for a tile and false otherwise. It's, uh, it looks uh, stupid, but okay, why not? Uh, moreover, I will construct an algorithm, a Turing machine, which will accept this uh, tuple of legal colors and that will reject all other tuple of legal, uh, of, uh, that will reject tuple of legal colors. We, we may say that uh, this Turing machine uh, stops uh, uh, when a tuple is legal and never stops otherwise, for example. And uh, here is a picture uh, stolen from the uh, talk of Linda. Uh, there is a, some uh, subtle difference. I made this grid of small squares explicit. It's by design. We will discuss it later. Uh, the idea is that uh, I will construct a tile set two where, uh, uh, which allows to implement this type of macro tiles. Uh, it's, uh, here is, uh, the size of these macro tiles is, say, n times n, and uh, every small square in this grid knows its role. Uh, some, uh, just every tile, first of all, every tile should know its coordinates in macro tile. Technically, it means that uh, for every square in my tile set two, the colors on its sides encode its coordinates in the macro tile modular n. So it means that we will need at least n square colors. Uh, but of course it's not enough. Uh, we will uh, need to encode here these k bits strings uh, to represent colors of the simulated tile set row. And uh, we will organize these communication lines so that these additional bits are uh, communicated, they're spread without, uh, without changes uh, from this m outer borderline of a macro tile in the middle part. So the, the width of the, these four lines must be k. So there are k parallel wires carrying uh, these bits inside. And in the middle of a macro tile, I will implement a space-time diagram of a Turing machine which verifies uh, that these four, macro, uh, these four uh, colors match each other. So what we have here in, in the gray zone, uh, it should look like a space-time diagram of a Turing machine which takes uh, these four inputs and uh, stops uh, without running out of the available space and time. If the colors are, the tuple of colors is legal, and uh, uh, if the tuple of colors is illegal, then there is no way to uh, provide the correct legal tiling of this gray part. So in uh, anthrop anthropomorphic uh, metaphor, each macro tile, uh, each individual tile in this macro tile uh, knows its role. It can be just a skeleton tile somewhere here where 
it uh, knows only its coordinate in the macro tile. It could be a communication wire where a small square knows that the signal, the bit, should be propagated from the left to the right or from the top to the bottom without changes. And there is some special important part of macro tile where each tile knows that it plays a role of a Turing machine. Somehow it simulates uh, a space-time diagram of a known Turing machine. So the, the construction works like this. You give me a, a tile set row, I uh, encode it in a Turing machine, and then given a Turing machine, I construct a tile set uh, which uh, allows me to implement these tilings, these, these, mac these macro tiles. Then, uh, my, uh, my, uh, and then a tiling in my tile set uh, will be split into macro tiles of this form, and each of them uh, is, a, by, by, uh, by construction, is amorphic to the, the initial tiles. Okay, and uh, to make it, uh, uh, to make it uh, uh, easier to generalize, uh, let us change it slightly. Uh, let us take not, let us uh, assume that here in the gray zone we have not an arbitrary Turing machine, but some fixed universal Turing machine. And uh, the first line of the gray, gray zone computes the text of the program, the index of a Turing machine that is simulated. Contains. Contains, yes, contains. So no, now uh, we have a kind of industrial, uh, an, an, an industrial procedure uh, of simulating all uh, uh, tile sets. So we, you can bring me uh, lots of different tiles at row, uh, and to, for each of them, I will construct such a simulating uh, tile set two uh, in essentially uh, the same way. The only thing that uh, I will uh, uh, modify for each individual tile set row is the, the are the tiles uh, resp that are uh, responsible for the for the very first line of the computational zone since they should somehow encode the text of the simulated program. Okay, uh, but uh, uh, this is all, was all about simulating some other tiles at row. What can I do if I want to simulate uh, my tile set itself? Uh, so I want to construct such a tile set too, uh, where uh, macro tiles look uh, more or less like that, and where uh, the macro tiles are isomorphic to my own tile set toe. It looks like an egg and, uh, egg and chicken problem. Uh, I have to know my tile set to write this program, and uh, I need to know this program to construct my tile set. Uh, but uh, the, yeah, probably th this part uh, of the argument uh, must be difficult for mathematicians, but uh, computer uh, scientists uh, say usually this place that is uh, so very boring, everyone knows how to do it. Uh, we can write a, a program that prints its own text. We can uh, prove uh, Kalini's fixed point theorem. We know how to organize programming which deals with, with uh, the text of its own program. And in this specific case, it's even more uh, uh, more, uh, more obvious than usually. Here we have a universal Turing machine with, a, with an access to the text of a program. So if we want to simulate a macro tile which is uh, similar to individual tiles, we should just, uh, again, an anthropomorphical metaphor. We should uh, uh, imagine ourselves uh, in the role of this program. It understands somehow that this macro tile uh, is a part of a macro macro tile. And in macro macro tile, it could play a role of a skeleton square. Then it's simple, we just have to verify that the, the coordinates on the left and on the right, on the top and on the bottom match each other. That they, the difference is plus one modular n. Uh, if uh, uh, we understand that we are playing a role of square in the communication 
uh, wire, then we have to verify that we correctly propagate this signal. And if we play a role of a computational zone, okay, if it's not the first line, again, it's simple. We just, just, we just should verify uh, that we uh, simulate correctly some standard universal Turing machine. The only tricky part is the very first line. Uh, here we should verify that on the next level of hierarchy, and the macro macro tile, the computational zone contains the text of exactly the same program. And here oh, we just need to read the bit uh, from this line, the, the corresponding bit from this line, just we, we look in the text of our own program and verify that on the next level we have exactly the same bit. So this is the, the idea. And when the, the simulated uh, uh, tiles, uh, tile set is uh, equal to the simulating tile set, we get this property of uh, self-similarity and uh, uh, it implies aperiodicity. Okay, uh, now the question, yeah, be, probably before the question, uh, uh, just I want to remind that uh, it's a pretty standard idea, it's uh, known in, a, in a popular culture, I'm sure you have seen uh, lots of graffiti with uh, these kind of pictures. But uh, what is funny is that people who are uh, drawing the, these pictures, they never try to scale it up. Uh, they never try to draw uh, a next level of hierarchy with super fish uh, composed of uh, these uh, big fishes. And uh, here you see that uh, we have some natural uh, constraints. Uh, we, uh, the size of a fish that we can simulate is bounded by the memory uh, of a small fish. But if we apply uh, this trick of self-simulation, we can construct a hierarchical structure of arbitrary size. So we probably, uh, so somebody should explain this idea to this anarchist who, who like this picture. <laughs> The picture is clear. You should have small fishes moving left, and the next level fish is moving right, and the next macro fish is moving left, and so on. Of course, you can eating is more difficult part, but just the, the, the hierarchy is quite clear. Okay. Just what, what, what I want to stress, uh, what, uh, what, what should be made explicit, the brain of this super fish it also composed in, uh, of small fishes. The cells of, of the brain of superfish composed of small fishes. So uh, uh, none of these small fishes uh, understands the general plan of the superfish. Uh, but a superfish can think in a sense like one individual fish. Okay, so uh, we need uh, pretty much the same trick, but uh, with many levels of self-simulation, we know now, we know how to guarantee uh, uh, periodicity, but it remains the question how to get, uh, how to get quasi-periodicity. Uh, maybe we already have it here. Uh, in fact, in fact, uh, uh, there are, uh, there is uh, some good news and some bad news. Uh, we'll start with good news. Uh, what is a, a, a quasi-periodicity? We want to guarantee that every pattern that appears in an infinite tiling appears there infinitely often. And I claim that we uh, have to verify this property only for small patterns of size two, two times two. Because uh, if you have a If you have uh, any pattern uh, in a tiling, a pattern of any size, then in this hierarchical uh, picture, it will be covered by at most four super, super, super macro tiles of a high enough rank. And if we can prove that every block of size two by two, every block of four individual tiles uh, is repeated infinitely often, then uh, self-similarity guarantees that the same property holds for super macro tiles of all ranks. So somehow, 
in this specific case, uh, to guarantee quasi-periodicity, we need to deal only with cells on, uh, on the ground zero, on, on ground level. On level zero with individual tiles uh, of size two by two. But also here is a bad news. In fact, if we take this uh, construction as it is, uh, it is not quasi-periodic. Uh, in fact, uh, we can even uh, localize the, the problem, localize the difficulty. If you take two by two uh, patterns somewhere here uh, among the skeleton tiles, then this pattern should be certainly repeated in every ma macro tile. So if you take some small pattern from here, it will be repeated here and there and in every macro tile of the same level, in the same position. Uh, the things are slightly uh, trickier for communication wires. Uh, a priori, there is no, it's not guaranteed that every pattern is repeated uh, in some other macro tiles. We can achieve this uh, using some, uh, uh, some smarter encoding of uh, uh, macro colors and strings of bits. But uh, this uh, trick will not save us because we have a more serious problem. We have this computational zone. And for the computational zone, there is a no reason why every small pattern should be repeated anywhere else. In general, it's not true. So we need uh, to adjust this construction to modify it somehow. We need to enforce that every block of size two by two from this gray zone appears again in some other place. And we will do it artificially, again, using uh, the trick known uh, to, the, to the popular culture. Uh, we will organize some artificial uh, slots, some uh, artificial prison cells, where we will simulate every uh, block of size two by two that appear, or at least that can appear in this gray zone. So we will organize this uh, matrix and uh, the, so the size of each cell of this prison cell is two by two. And th this small uh, group of gray cells here should uh, uh, duplicate everything that we can uh, see in this gray zone. Since the size of the gray zone is much less than the size of uh, macro tile itself, or technically it should be some poly log n, where n is the size of macro tile, we have lots of uh, free space for that. So if uh, you use some uh, microscope and look at some guys sitting here, then these four guys, they, uh, when they're looking uh, outside on the walls of their prison, they think that they are doing some, uh, some job useful for the society. They uh, think that they are uh, uh, living here in the gray zone and they participate in some, some uh, important common job. They simulate computations. But in fact, uh, this is not the case. In fact, they are sitting in the middle of nowhere. Uh, they have no idea about the right coordinates of their position in macro tile. And they are used only to guarantee that the block that appears here or that theoretically could appear here is used again, is duplicated he they here. Are needed only to guarantee diversity. Yes, yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And do they uniquely are determined by the, in, in, in which specific cell there is uh, only one yeah, so, which can So for, a, for each position in the gray zone, we have uh, some constant possible uh, ways to have a, a uh, to, to fill uh, this uh, pattern here. And for, e for each of these constant uh, possibilities here, we have one, uh, one prison cell here. So there is some te technical problem that you should somehow uh, organize the colors in such a way that you can, have, you can enforce the, the contents completely by two, two by two. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, the, 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 the walls of the prison uh, the, the, the internal wall, wall, walls of the prison, they determine uniquely uh, what, uh, uh, what guys can sit inside. And if you look at this, uh, uh, this uh, six, uh, eight, eight colors here, 
if you look at these eight colors here, you understand which position they simulate and uh, what are the, uh, the uh, what what are the, uh, what group can be placed here inside. Just a simple technical adjustment needed for, for coloring. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the, the, uh, the so this prison guards here these uh, white cells, they have the right idea about their coordinates in the macro tile. And if you look uh, outside, they uh, demonstrate uh, the correct uh, coordinates in the macro tile. But uh, on the side, uh, on the internal side, they uh, cheat and they simulate some absolutely fake position. So somehow they, they, they simulate the coordinates of this spot. No, not only coordinates, but also uh, the additional information used in the simulation of a Turing machine. So, if you look at, 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 the, at the color here, uh, they contain the, the information uh, corresponding to the, to the space di diagram of a Turing machine. Okay, so, uh, so far it, it was uh, this uh, uh, computer science uh, style uh, construction of a tile set which is at once aperiodic and quasi-periodic. But uh, we wanted uh, more, we wanted not just aperiodicity, we wanted non-computability. And uh, uh, actually we can uh, achieve uh, th uh, this uh, using uh, more or less uh, the same uh, uh, tricks, but uh, we need uh, somehow to generalize it. We uh, need to use a variable zoom factor, that is, on each next level, the size of macro tiles is getting bigger and bigger, so we can embed some computation inside, and we can guarantee that uh, this com uh, the, the correct tiling is always non-computable. Uh, but probably I should, I should not uh, talk about the, these, these technical details. If, uh, uh, anyone is interested, we can discuss it with a cup of coffee. I, I think. Uh, in, uh, but let's say just one thing. Just somehow, uh, it seems that you, you, you cannot guarantee that the, the tile is minimal. The tile set is minimal. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, not just wait, wait. Here we have only uh, aperiodicity. No, for non-computability. For non-computability. No. Somehow it happens that still it seems that your technique guarantees that everything appears uh, everywhere with a given frequency. So how it happens when you switch to non-computability, why it starts, why it becomes weaker, this property of material? Uh, Technically, what is the it, it, um, when, we, uh, when we have to guarantee non-computability, we need to embed some non-computable sequence in a computational zone. And uh, if you have some individual uh, tiling, uh, which is a non-computable, then uh, this sequence embedded in computational zones is uh, the same uh, everywhere. Of, in the, uh, the same prefixes of these sequences are embedded in computational zone of all macro tiles of uh, the same rank K. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, uh, this trick guarantees that uh, each, uh, each individual part from a gray zone is repeated uh, uh, infinitely often, so e each prefix is repeated infinitely often, but you cannot guarantee that all possible prefixes are uh, repeated infinitely often. So somehow, uh, wh when you uh, 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 think of this trick on the next level of hierarchy, you see that for each part here, we have a, a finite number of macro tiles uh, here, and we cannot, we, we uh, do not try to simulate uh, uh, all uh, subconsciousness of these uh, macro tiles in the prison cell. Yes, so the source of this non-uniqueness is because you cannot enforce one non-computable sequence, you can enforce a class. Yes. So in different classes they are different. But in, in, in one tiling it's all synchronized along the tiling, uh, and so the sequence is the same everywhere, so one, each individual tiling is... Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and for other theorems, okay, it's again uh, pretty much the same uh, uh, plan, but uh, more 
uh, uh, much more technical tricks. I think I should stop here.